Okay, today we're going to spend a few minutes on the discussion tip, choosing a book. Now, of all the things that plague discussion groups, or even family reading time, it's choosing a book. Now, in a family, the difficulty comes in when you don't, aren't sure what to choose because you have different age groups of children, or um, maybe you're single and you don't know what you would want to read, or you're in a book group and your book group keeps choosing poor books. But this is a discussion tip, and so we're not going to talk about choosing books from the standpoint of what you should read individually. We're going to talk about the trouble that plagues book groups in choosing a book to read. This is how it usually goes down. And um, if, you, if you look online, if you type in book group comics, the number one comic that comes up is about choosing the book. There's some hilarious ones. One of my favorite ones is there's two women sitting on a couch and they're um, they have really angry faces on and there's other women in the mid there's some other women in the middle of the room and they've built a fire and they're burning the book in the middle of the room and they're really really angry and the women sitting on the couch I guess they're not so much angry they're kind of kind of perplexed and they're looking at each other and the one says to the other well at least we inspired a lot of passion this goes on it's it's comics are made of it because it's so typical that book groups have the greatest trouble choosing a book and there's very simple reasons for that. The thing, the number one thing that book groups do wrong in choosing a book is that they do it democratically. So the first thing I'm going to say in choosing a book is don't, do not be democratic. What does that mean? That means that you let everybody take a turn choosing, right? Like that's the democratic, that's the equal, fair way to be in a book group. You get everybody together and you say, we're going to do a book group. And so every month, everybody's going to take a turn choosing the book. And sometimes you're really organized and like the person does a review the month before and they hand out a little paper and they tell you where you can get it. And then everybody else chooses their, their you know, book they want to read. It happens on a very regular basis that books that are chosen nobody has read. They've just been recommended on like an Oprah list or a library list or they've heard about them so nobody in the group has read it and that the bottom line is that most people don't have sufficient reading background to be able to be really discerning and choose really great books for a book group to read. This is the very worst thing you could do in your book group maybe not the worst thing, one of the very worst things you could do in trying to have a successful book group is to tell everybody they can take turns choosing the book. So what in the world are you going to do instead? The first thing that you're going to do, <clears throat> and uh, the, you, can, you can read more about this in the articles in the book on, on you know, book group Bible reading, all about how to run a successful book group, but one of the things that you can do is as an individual or as a group, you can decide a purpose, okay? Now, there's more to this than I can get into on this video. There's more to understand and, and think about. But what you can do is say, okay, you can define a specific purpose. There are other grander purposes about why we read and all this kind of thing, and there's more thought and effort that a book group leader could put in to it, whether it's, uh, anyway, could put into it as a book group leader, whether it's a youth group or adult, adult group. But that individual that's leading the group or the group together can decide, okay, and if you want a book group that's a reflection of what you want, then you better be the one that decides and get your group together and says, here's what it is. Like it, hate it, it's what it is, and this is my book group and this is how I'm going to do it. You know, you state your reasons, explain why you're choosing the books you're choosing. But when you understand, okay, reading for entertainment is great, but we have higher purposes than that. So maybe you want to learn something together. Maybe you want to fix your parenting or you all want to lose weight this year. You're a support system, but you're reading things that are going to help you on this path to whatever it is you're going to do. Maybe you want to discover truth or you want to travel or you want to learn American history. But you've got to have some kind of purpose here that will create, this creates some kind of criteria, right? Like. From now on, how are we going to decide 
What books we're going to read, it's got to be that they're tied into something that everybody agrees upon because you know what almost always happens? The book group gets boring and lame because people don't know how to choose great books or they choose books they've never read before or on another person's recommendation. They're almost always really modern novels and it gets old. I can't tell you how many book groups I've, book group leaders I've talked to or book groups I've attended where it's a very, very common problem that a, a certain percentage of the group, you know, a third, sometimes a half, don't even buy the books or haven't read them or couldn't get it passed to them because this is why. Why buy it? And why read it? Because this book group has a history of choosing books that I don't care about reading. Because they don't enlighten me, they don't make me feel great, they don't teach me anything important, it's just the same old blah blah blah, we're just going to read another novel and another novel and another novel. And you can only be entertained month after month after month for so long before it just gets old. Or there was something in, in these other books that was offensive to so-so. Now, now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying you can please everybody in the book group all the time, but you can create a criteria based on what your purposes are that says, this is why we're going to read this book because it's going to tie into the purpose that we've set for ourselves. And with that criteria, everybody can go ahead and read that book. They'll want to read it because it's been more carefully chosen. It's been proven to be a book of quality and um, it has something to give them and, you know, ideally, and I emphasize this over and over again in these discussion tip videos, and that is to continue to encourage everybody in the group to use the reading skills, to use this blog. This blog can be a way that you filter. You decide you're going to read things that are recommended on this blog or on this specific reading list or, you know, again, what are our purposes for this book group? And if it's not just entertainment in a social club, if it has anything to do with reading or learning, because that's what's going to happen if it hasn't already happened. What's going to happen is that the book group is going to break down, whether it's youth, the youth are going to start showing up, not caring, not willing to talk, not having anything to contribute, or the adults are not going to read the book and it's going to be all about the food and the social hour, which is fine if what you want is a social club, but if you want a book group, if you want an effective discussion, if you really want to learn something and, and understand something, you know, grow your mind, improve your discussion skills, whatever it is you want to do, You've got to have some criteria that is outside the sphere of you can't just let everybody in the group arbitrarily choose whatever they want to choose because then, you know what happens? Even if it's been decided, I've been in groups where there were a handful of founders and other people could join the group, but the founders were the only ones that could choose the books. That's okay too. That got a little awkward. Other people complained about not being able to choose when they were able to choose and there was no clear criteria from them either. In other words, Anything that we do well, we do well because we have a purpose behind it and we understand what we're trying to accomplish. Book groups are no different. So have a purpose so your book group knows what you're trying to accomplish. Now, I'm going to say right here that one of the criteria can be classics, right? I'm all about that. We're going to do a, um, a reading skill of understanding how to read, how and why to read classics. Um, there's some there's some great articles act and books out there about the about the importance of that. I can't go into what I mean by a classic or even all the reasons why that's important, except to say that they lasted in time for a reason. You know, they have the weight of sometimes thousands, sometimes hundreds, sometimes dozens of years behind them, where people have repeatedly said, "This is worth reading. This is worth reading. This is worth reading." And so your book group doesn't have to be a self-filtering um, entity where everybody just chooses whatever they feel like or what somebody recommended or what the librarian liked and then they don't know if even they're going to like it, let alone anybody in the group and there's just not going to be, you know, it's harder to learn about the author, it's harder to get background on the book, it's harder to use the reading skills when it was published last week. It's impossible to know if it's a really valuable reading unless it's gone through multiple publishings and had the, the weight of the public behind it. I just, um, I can't emphasize enough 
that having classics as part of your criteria and part of your purpose, that doesn't mean you don't read modern self-help books, but even with the, within the self-help arena, there are some that have been shown over time to be more worthwhile than others. So have a higher level quality standard for your group and just say, you know what, we're just going to have a higher standard in our group. Um, now the last thing is variety. This is another thing in choosing books that um, that most book groups do not do well at all. Again, most of the time they're reading modern novels. I mean, that's just, that's my experience. And you get into some, sometimes in some homeschool circles with different ideas about classics. Maybe people have read, you know, about you know, the importance of, of classical education or that kind of thing, or they've gotten into American history. There's some good, there's sometimes there's variety there. <clears throat> one of the things that I've done through creating curriculum and teaching classes lots of places, one of the things that I've learned is one thing that's very valuable that I'll recommend to you on variety, which is something that I do in my book groups programs, um, is to alternate nonfiction and, and fiction, okay? alternate nonfiction fiction. One of the reasons that this works so well is because if they're related at all, like for example, maybe Middle March is too long for you, maybe that's too difficult. Um, maybe there's a different novel that, that you're excited about reading. Maybe it's Wizard of Oz, maybe it's um, a Narnia book, a children's novel, 1984, I don't know. But when you read something nonfiction before you read the fiction and they somehow have common themes, then you can look for those themes in the nonfiction and then find them in the fiction. It gives the fiction more meat and weight and something concrete that the group is, is working on learning together and looking for together. So another one is to focus on themes. You could have six months of one theme, you could have two months of one theme, you could have two short reads, nonfiction, fiction in one month, um, based on a specific theme, but the theme helps with the variety to tie the nonfiction into the fiction. Um, it's a really great way to go. Also different types, or I guess I'll say genres. Read all kinds of genres, don't just, and this is again, it goes back to why read, that one of the reasons that people choose novels all the time is because they're interested in reading for entertainment. They don't have a lot of good discernment in short stories, poetry. Um, some of the funnest reads are when you read a handful of fairy tales or fables and you understand what to look for, which is another reading skill that we'll do in the future, what to look for in those kinds of things. You know, everybody's petrified of Shakespeare, but if you do, if you know some of the things about how to read Shakespeare, um, it doesn't have to be Shakespeare, but there are lots of interesting, there are lots of really great plays to read, uh, speeches, essays. If you look at the drop-down menu on the blog, you'll see, I don't know, a couple dozen different types of books that, 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 that is variety, genres and types of readings. Um, some of my best discussions have been on children's literature or on speeches or on, uh, plays, worldviews, uh, World, there, there's just an endless, uh, okay, not, not probably endless, but there are just such a big variety. Mix it up. Choose different kinds of readings. Maybe you could say, you know, we want to read this for a certain period of time. We're going to focus on these themes. We're going to mix it up with all these different types of readings. It just makes a huge difference in your experience in your book group. So choosing a book is the backbone of a great discussion. You've got to have something valuable. Look, if you want to have a good discussion, there's got to be something to discuss, right? There's got to be something meaty. And if all you've got is some plot, and there's virtually no depth, the person didn't know how to flesh out real characters, there's no human nature to look for, there's very few principles and truth, what are you going to discuss? If you want to have a great discussion, use classics, have a lot of variety in the books that you choose, have some kind of criteria for what you're choosing based on your themes or your purposes, your, your, you know, you want to self-improvement, folks of truth, whatever it is, and do not, again, let everybody just go in a circle and choose whatever they want without any boundaries to what that is going to be. 
as the leader, take ownership of this. Decide, you know, whether you're the mom or you're the teacher or you're the book group leader. Wherever it is that you want to discuss great stuff, you've got to choose great books in order to discuss them well. We'll see you next time.